This is my room. My eyes are on the speaker. Tell me why. Because <laughs> that looks fantastic. It's June 2010 at Pitt Street Infant School in Mexborough. The reception children are starting their day in Libby Price's class. Nine months ago, John Bailey dropped in on their very first day to see Libby help them embark on a journey of learning. You're itching everywhere. Oh, let's just scratch a little back just right there. That might help. Does that help? Come on a little bit. Come John on. saw that they were learning rules of respect Claire, and behaviour. Beautifully. Do you know what this chicken says here? It says, good sitting, please. We are always kind and help each other. We're all tigers in this class. Right? And do you know what tigers do? They go... <laughs> and they were taking their very first step towards literacy. Nine months later, and the fledgling learners are transformed. But how did they get there? Are you ready, my little tigers? Wow! Right, OK, then. Put your hand up and tell me what you're going to do to be a good learner today. Good sitting. Yeah, you've already shown me you can do good sitting. Try hard. You're going to try hard. Go on, Ned. I'm concentrating. You're going to concentrate. OK, then, so what, what happens to our brain when we're learning, then? Go on, then, Ned. It makes you think what to do harder. And yeah. Then, and then you can do things better and better. The language since September has rocketed. Of all the boxes of tricks that we've got, in teaching children how to read and write at the moment. What are the most important things for you? I think, basically, though, they've got to have a love for the word, the language, uh, for books in general. And I think by, first of all, giving them a love for books and an interest in books that, that spurs them on to want to read. Our phoneme that we're doing today is going to be... Aye. Can you show me the action for it? Aye. 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 Libby puts a strong focus on literacy. All right, are you ready then? Go on then, Alfie. Uh, might. Might. Good. Sight. The new initiative on letters and sounds has helped me in my teaching of, of reading, and I do think it's pushed my children on. This next one's for... Go on then, Gabriel. Yes. Yeah. I right. right. I love the way you blended that. You said all the phonemes. You said re right, right. Good reading. He... Ned, can you tell me something about this phoneme frame? It's got a trigraph. It's got a trigraph. So what's going to go there? I. I. How many phonemes has it got? Three. Good boy. See if he's right. Woohoo! Yippee! Woohoo! Yippee! Well done. This next one's for. Go on then, Alfie. Originally, I would have taught the children the alphabet and phonics, but now we've got the digraphs, the trigraphs, and, and I've actually given them that language. Whereas before, I would have thought, oh no, hang on a minute, well, they won't be able to understand that. Right. But now, if there's a word there that means something, and, and it's, I, I use it with the children. So. so you're not frightened to introduce them to very high level language? No, it's, it's um, expectations again at the end of the day. I have high expectations that children will come with you. But if you learn these three things, which all make up your address, when asked if you know where you live, the answer will be yes. OK, then, turn to your, your um, talk partner, please. Get a talk partner. Look into your, your talk partner's eyes. Right. Make brain contact. Are you getting your brains contacted? You're going to think about something that you would like to tell your partner about your house. It could be your address. It could be who lives in your house. 
What are you going to tell your partner about your house? Have you got in your house? Your brother? Yeah. Just tell me a bit more about talk partners and how that works. I'm getting them to practice their vocabulary and practice um, something that I'm going to ask them to be writing about later. I think at this age, it helps them, making the physical contact helps them to home in and focus in on the person that they're talking to. Joe, what did Gabriel tell you about his house? Well, Gabriel said he got a brown house. A brown house, isn't uh, it, Gabriel? Yeah, and, it, and, and, and in my bedroom I had a bunk bed. Oh, that's a good information. Right, also, then. I'm checking that they have actually listened, so it's training them to listen to other people when they, when they speak to them. It's like the art of conversation, really. Right, so what sort of words do you think you might need when you're writing about your house? This is a hardy party. Hardy party. Mm. Are you ready? Window. Window. Start, what does it start with? Window. Where? Start. Where? Excellent. Well done. Good girl. Anybody finish that one off for Rebecca? Window. Um, go on then, Aaron. What? Where? E. E. N. N. J. D. A. 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 This isn't a uniform ability group. The differentiation is nearly invisible when I look at it from the outside. So how does all that happen? Through careful planning, really. Sort of got, like, three different um, levels of work going on there for the children. And it's all aimed at what those children specifically need at that particular time. So we're doing simple sentences. I'm looking for finger spaces, small writing, full stops and capital letters. <laughs> do you think you can do that? Yes! Yes? I know you can. You've got your group that's working independently to get that intrinsic motivation going. One, two, three, four, five, you're working with me. I will support a group that needs uh, more focused teaching. Funny one, it sounds as though it starts with an O, oh, but it's not. Onions is like this, look. A, N, E, A, N. So. You got your, you got your N, and you sit at the end, so you did really well for them, didn't you? Onions. And my uh, my teaching assistant will focus on a, a on a group that needs specific teaching. So we'd look for the word that says bathroom. Have a look at these words that start with B. Which one do you think could be bathroom? Listen, B. Ah, that one is bathroom. And you could choose which one you wanted to put bathroom in. It's differentiated by the task that's given and by the support and the scaffolding that we put in place for the children. Let me look at you. Are you ready, my little tigers? Yeah! Good. Here we go. We're just going to look at some of the work that we've done this morning, right? Would you like to read it for us, Claire? I have one kitchen in my house and I have a sticker set in my Bedroom. And she's written on the bottom, I like my full stops. Let's have a look at her full stops, shall we? See if she's got them. Uh, Listen to Daisy, because Daisy's got some. I can't fun. see one at the end of the sentence. Come and point Whoa. out where? Yeah. <gasps> it's a little. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. She has, she, one. She's forgotten the one at the end, but she can put. Okay. Did you not? Why is it? I'll, I'll check. It's Wait. a little one. She thinks it's a very little one. Let's have a look, see if it is. Oh, yeah, there is. There's a very little one at the end. She's right. Is there anything else that anybody would like to say about Claire's work? Jo? She's she got beautiful finger spaces. She has got beautiful finger spaces, Daisy. They're able to discuss each other's work, um, make robust remarks about it, and then uh, defend each other. That's remarkable, isn't it? It, it is powerful stuff because the children are seeing and learning from other children and, uh, and it's, it's peer assessment at its, at its best. My door is painted red. Right. Do you know what? 
a really good test of neat writing is if somebody else can read it. Right, here we go. I'm going to ask Kieran. I have got three bedrooms in my house. All that, I think, is high-level assessment. A lot of people would be very pleased to have that kind of discourse going on in a classroom full of 13 or 14-year-olds. But you can uh, bring it into a level that, uh, that uh, four- and five-year-olds can access it. And they love talking about their own work and they love sharing it with other people. Oh, wait a minute. Let's have a look at Daisy. Daisy, what do you think? She's put a map that is dead over... Oh. oh, well noticed. Well done, yeah. Goodbye. It should be at all. Right. But let's tell her what she's done well. Let's just tell her what she's done well, because she's done a fabulous job there. What has she done well? And they want to learn and they want to improve. And so if we... C and they can take uh, constructive criticism from their friends now. We've built that up. And that very first day when we said, we are kind and helpful, right, my teaching has been built on that. So if we view it in that way, then it's not threatening and, and it, it doesn't hurt the feelings. Some of the children's success in literacy has been due to Libby's alliance with their parents. Could you tell me how you've been working with the parents? I asked them to spend the first 10, 15 minutes of the morning uh, working on the literacy skills of the children. So you spell it first. Not all. With the parents that do it, does it make a noticeable difference in the classroom? to the progress of their children. Uh, oh, yes, yes. It accelerates their learning. Lovely. These parents have worked really, really hard for their children and, uh, and you can st see it in the standard of literacy that the, the children are, are at at the moment. Well done. They've made a lot of progress towards independent learning. What else is involved in creating independent learners? Getting to be independent learners is um, getting them to want to do things for themselves, to get them to be motivated and get them to be able to feel confident to rise to a challenge and not have no fear of failing. Now then, you have to be really careful, slow counting, put them in a line. This is really exciting. Go on then. <laughs> Thirty, thirty-one. But how do you write thirty-one? It's a, it's a three and a one. Three and a one. Like that child who's yeah. trying to get to thirty-one with his counters. Yeah. Yeah. His self-esteem was raised to a new level and it's then with that comes self-belief and he knows now that next time he does anything like that, he, he will be able to, to do it. Put your hand up if you've challenged yourself in your maths work today. Gabriel, how did you challenge yourself? I, I, just, I just kept on concentrating and I, and, I, and I didn't waste my time. Do you know? What a fabulous learner. Did you hear that? Yeah. He yeah. kept on concentrating and he didn't waste his time. Put it there, mister. Well done. So that is the way of developing independent learning through uh, praise, encouragement, support um, and, um, and differentiation in, in the tasks that you give them. <laughs>